woke up this morning to a great question from my main man, Blue, down in Australia. Ready to go! Alrighty guys, um, interesting video this one, and we're going deep into arm wrestling philosophy today. Um, and this one is specifically um, something I want to float to you, sir, Mr. Devin Larratt, the ultimate philosopher. <laughs> So thanks so much for that nice introduction. This is going to be a technical video, guys, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to dive deep with Blue here on the subject. I'll kind of use his video. I'll use uh, <clears throat> a match that he's talking about a little bit uh, for reference, and uh, and we'll we'll see where it takes us. Well, I'm wrestling. Um, as you guys might have known. I have been investigating what it is to be a short armed arm wrestler as well as a long armed arm wrestler because I do believe for me as a medium sized arm wrestler I inevitably face opponents both taller and shorter than me. And I was driving home from training tonight thinking about Devon's return to center concept with the hill and taking control of it and I had a few thoughts. So I want to elaborate. And Devin, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. All right, so if you're not familiar with Devin's return to center concept, okay, so we have inside moves, outside moves. So outside, inside. Okay, now, initially, the objective is to claim the top of the hill. The man plants his flag on top of the hill. He has control. Now All right, to further elaborate on this hill, what the hill really speaks to is the complete uh, you know arm wrestling pyramid, uh, the full technical birth of arm wrestling. Not everybody's hill looks the same. When you talk about your flag on top of the hill, basically what that means is you control the center line of arm wrestling. And it's the way I've relayed this message in the past is it's done through the high hand. When this concept uh, initially started being talked about, it was very much based around the high hook and the very high posting top hook because it was believed that these are the highest forms of either an inside or an outside flowing movement. The high hook is basically uh, a move that from a very high position is able to flow through an inside chain, inside being primarily defined as the shoulder moving forward. And a high hook you are not running away from the match. You are probably moving to the side, <clears throat> and if anything, neutral or slight movement forward. As soon as you start to come away with it, it starts to turn into a top roll, outside technique being defined as shoulder moving away from the match. Inside, outside. Um, now, who has claim to the top of the hill is the one who has chased the other person down their respective hill. We're not all living on the same mountain. So what that means is wherever the center of our technical um, uh, diversity is, <clears throat> that's our center because all great arm wrestlers have an ability to move more to the inside, commit their shoulder more, or move more to the outside in whatever movement or style that they like to practice. The high hook, high top roll, just being one example of what is the center. He is going to force his opponents down the hill, down the hill, whether it be the inside or on the outside. Uh, as soon as he has control of his opponent and he's boxed them into that corner, he is going to return to center and take control on the other side and eventually push his opponent off the hill, being victory. Now that 
was Devin's lesson in about 10 seconds. The match starts, people go, start arm wrestling, and then there's a return to center. Uh, it sounds as if you're talking about the return to center primarily is coming from the guy who's in charge. So return to center is really primarily used by the defensive player. Okay, whoever uh, forces the other person to play defense is considered to be the stronger person. So whoever is dictating the match, what that means is whoever is forcing the person to the outer fringes and not letting a person use their center is considered to be dominant, okay? So in a match, I would love to just hold this, the, all the fundamentals of arm wrestling. That means have control of my cup, not get turned over, so that means have good pronation and have enough supination stability to keep the arm inside the body and the match just looks great, like, you know, something like that. You have all the fundamentals, there's no problems. I'm not retreating. The person who's retreating normally has to give something up okay it has to run down one of the sides of the hill either they're going to open something up jam out and land in a more open style of, of top roll right they're giving things up sometimes they're going to give things up in their pronation so they're going to get into a very defensive hook style uh, sometimes they're going to give up uh, aspects all the way to a flop so they're just retaining their, their shoulder commitment okay either way uh, thinking about controlling the top of the hill means you're forcing the person to retreat in their technical um, in their technical ability. Now, everybody has a different center. It's important to recognize that. The reason why it's the defensive person's main concept to return to center is after every kind of surge, there's an ability to regroup position. And returning to center means you're regaining what you just gave up to stay in the match. And by returning to center, you're able to once again give it up on the next surge. If you do not return to center, you will be forced lower and lower down the pyramid until you're left with less and less options and less efficiency and will result in a pin, like you were explaining. The stronger person is typically using a rule I like to think of as intimacy. And what that really means is that the person you can hurt the most is the person that you're closest to. And this is true in real life, and it's also true on the arm wrestling table. So what that means is when a person retreats, okay, to some degree, you're adjusting your technique and you're not just staying in your lofty position which established you the center. You're adjusting and moving your techniques and your pressures so that you're closest to them as possible. So as they drop, um, you may not take what's being given to you. Um, you may come right with them and follow them, but either way, the stronger person um, will follow the person down. So what typically happens in a match is the two competitors either go out together and there's like some kind of a finger walkie thing, or they go in together and there's some kind of a shoulder commitment, who's getting the better cup, isolating the other person's arm, or there's a split and one is going more out and the other person is going more in. Either way, when you consider the rule of intimacy, and the rule of return to center, what happens is in any one of the situations, one person will kind of be a little bit better off, have a little bit more maneuverability, and the other person will be trying hard to regain all the things they've given up to stay in the match. The reason why controlling the center, being controlling the middle of the arm rest and controlling the center line is so important is the center line is where really most of the magic happens when somebody when you follow somebody down normally things get very bad 
as they try to cross the center line. There's an extreme binding that happens. Either when the person's trying to come in against the shoulder that's already committed, or somebody's trying to retake their hand when it's already been retaken, already been taken. Either way, it typically gets worse than once. And once the opponent realizes that they cannot cross the center line and that the other person's on top of them and that they're getting pushed further and further down, this is a feeling of inevitability that you'll feel as an arm wrestler and normally what results in the other person quitting. I think there's another side to the story. For me, being in the man on the top of the hill and the concept of pushing your opponents down, returning to center, is only one half of the story. It is a great half of the story. It is the half of the story that often makes people pin themselves. I, myself, love making people pin themselves. And this concept of climbing the top of the hill and then returning to center and forcing your opponent down, in, out, in, out, taking control through good fundamental arm wrestling is a beautiful concept. However, for a short armed arm wrestler, this diagram evolves. And I want to know what you think, Devin, about this concept. And I want to know, have you thought of it this way before? And if you haven't, what do you think? And if you have, what did you think? <laughs> okay, so, this concept, as it is now, I believe is for the man who inherently has the best opportunity to get to the top of the hill. Okay, if I was to face a better, taller, low hand top roller, for instance, claiming this strategy is gonna be difficult. It's not impossible. There are plenty short arm top rollers that are strong enough to claim the top of the hill. However, most often, if you are shorter than your opponent, more often than not, you're not going to be able to claim the top of the hill. But that doesn't mean you're out of the fight. Not claiming the top of the hill means you have to try to undermine the hill. Now, undermining the hill with outside moves, undermining the hill with inside moves. Okay, your job is to dig away at the hill, trying to undermine the hill. If at any point you completely undermine the hill, the hill collapses. Okay, so you, you can undermine the hill without ever getting on top of the hill. Picture this, okay. If I'm against a low hand top roller, he has claimed the top of the hill. My wrist, I can still post my wrist and have two options. I'm never gonna get up on top of that hill, but with my wrist like this, I can, on the inside, attack there, or on the outside, still with my wrist gone, attack there. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Constantly undermining the integrity of the hill that the man steps on. Okay, so just to clarify, uh, what I would say is, so you're talking about, uh, you know, undermining the hill somehow from the bottom, okay, with some kind of switch happening. Uh, you mentioned uh, that, imagine a guy has a, a low hand top roll. A low hand top roll does not necessarily mean that the guy controls the top of the hill. Um, I'm going to say one of the characteristics of outside arm wrestling is you have um, rising kind of covered off, as in the other person has to hold on to you or you're able to re-grip basically at will, okay? So um, I just want to clarify that in your example, when you have a high hand, you may actually be talking about you actually do have control of the top of the hill. Um, you just don't have full control uh, of the whole of the whole thing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say that in, you're you're saying that the low hand top roller actually does have control of the top of the hill, and that you're down here somehow 
magically switching over. And that's the part that I think is very, very difficult to do, okay, is somehow have a plausible cross of the center line of arm wrestling. Uh, I understand if you have your wrist bent back, you can totally be in the match, either, you know, bent back, posting up, like we saw uh, Levon open against Vitaly, or there's, there's lots of examples. You guys do that kick back, you know, bent back, posting, um, or even in a Kings move, you can be bent back and still have, you know, outside arm wrestling covered off. But the ability to cross over freely um, will indicate that in some way that you are actually in control of the match, which means that you actually do control the center. It means that you are pushing your opponent to have to pull defensively against you, as in they're having to move to the fringes of their of their arm wrestling repertoire. Uh, so I just want to clarify that if you do not control the center, okay, it is very difficult to cross over. Now, I, I understand what you're saying, where you're saying that side pressure, potentially, is the center of, of the arm wrestling attack and, and what it's, what's, everything is being based off of. Um, and I'll say that uh, if you're good enough at anything, it's going to win you matches. But the more I think about arm wrestling, uh, there, there's a few things that are just so consistent. One of the consistencies is the extension of, uh, of, of your opponent. So what that means is one of the most dangerous things that can, have, that can happen to you as an arm wrestler is that the match just moves further away from you. I always say that you can control your body more than you can control anything else. The further away things are from your body, the less and less you can control them. So one of your goals as an arm wrestler is just to bring the match close to you. In this traditional set, uh, it puts an extreme value on the ability to bring the match close to you by this means. Control, control the top of the hand, and from there, the whole system breaks down. Um, to argue that side pressure uh, is as base powerful in that concept uh, in terms of efficiency, I don't think would be accurate because I don't think that side pressure has an end state of bringing the match closer to you. Uh, so in, in that way, I believe that if the match is close, efficiency has the option of, of getting into the match. And as soon as it does, side pressure's efficiency will be degraded. Now, I will tell you that I actually don't think that this pyramid, the way it was described to you years ago, is as valid uh, now as it was then due to an evolution of the sport uh, through rules, table dimensions. And I, and I think that, I, I've said it before, but I think that perhaps a more powerful lead vector, a more powerful uh, just due to the strength, which is... Uh, capable of being exerted, uh, the, the binding of the strap, which results in an inability to take advantage of a dropped riser, um, the added distance to drag. I, I, I could very much be persuaded that a way to undermine this pyramid is through a strap drag. If you told me that this, that this is the new center of arm wrestling. The straight pull away and an and extension of an opponent in this vector, I would be very much potentially on your side with a whopping 53% agreement, maybe even 60. Uh, while the high hand is extremely vital, in the, in the modern arena, uh, it's hard to argue that a strap drag, when done correctly, uh, 
may be the new center of arm wrestling. Now it's a race between the man who's trying to step on top of the hill to push me off and get me to fall away versus me trying to undermine the hill before he pushes me off. Now, this to me is short arm arm wrestling. It's side pressure arm wrestling. It's Todd Hutchings arm wrestling. And it's as viable an option as being the man on top of the hill. It's also, I believe, just as technical. Um, outside, inside, outside, inside, with the use of superior side pressure and arm power slash back pressure, we can potentially win the match this way. We never need to get on top of the hill. Okay, of course these are interchangeable. You can be on top of the hill and then all of a sudden find yourself no longer on the top of the hill. But once you have the top of the hill, it's usual that you would keep it. Now, I truly believe that this is the same concept as Devin has always preached. Inside, outside, claim the top of the hill, control it, force people off. But I do believe that if you are a shorter arm wrestler, it is generally easier to access this style. And for you, Devin, um, Todd Hutchins is a great example of how he would have felt when he was pulling you. He didn't try to get on top of the hill. He tried to, with an outside move, because his wrist was pronated, even though it was back, his wrist was pronated, undermine your hill. And then when you forced him into a hook, he tried to undermine your hill on this side. And he almost, he probably, by the time you Devin forced him finally off, it was probably only this much of the hill remaining, so to speak. Anyway, arm wrestling for me is a beautiful thing. There's so much mastery that can be learned and translated from concept into your arm and hand. Knowing when to use this method versus this method against what type of opponent is truly what makes an arm wrestler great. Um, not only is it strength, there's so much combat. All right, that's it in a nutshell. Devin, when I'm next with you, I would love to uh, sit down and theorize on this one with you. Hear what your thoughts are, man. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Yes, that's a The Todd Hutchings match is really interesting. A lot of people look at that a certain way. A lot of people have very strong feelings about the King's move. I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that this hill is at least somewhat accurate in that inside techniques, the shoulder typically moves forward? And outside techniques, the shoulder typically moves back. Returning to center and intimacy, these concepts become exceptionally powerful when controlling the center line. What that means in particular is that through an overall sense of being able to control the center of your arm wrestling diversity, you force somebody into the fringes of their arm wrestling repertoire, forcing them to only progress further in one way. That means further retreating and running their shoulder further away or retreating and moving their shoulder more and more forward until they're out of space. And I'll ask you, did Todd use inside or outside arm wrestling techniques against me. All right, all the matches that you're gonna see now are in half speed. You see initially Todd off the drive. He's driving to the side, and if you wanna divide this from the center line, he is certainly using an outside tactic. I've kinda of tried to be somewhat balanced, tried to stay outside with him. Actually, I do think I got pinned, didn't get called, I go harder and I switch to a more outside technique than him even and we're fighting for that high spot now. We're both fighting outside styles. If you watch Hutching's shoulder, 
is continually moving backwards in his drives. He is trying to return to center. Every once in a while you'll see him stand up where he should cross that center line and be able to activate with a push. However, you never quite see him do it because neither one of us is quite dominant yet. As he stands and there was the big difference. His attempt to cross the center line was failed and it ended up in a regrip, which I capitalized on. This inevitably leads to his failure where it opens up a window for me to actually cross the center line which you see me start right about now you see my leg there we go and I've crossed the center so through intimacy returning to center I've crossed the center line which inevitably finished the matches which will finish the match very very quickly and you did not see him actually cross center and move forward with any kind of legitimate threat. Next match, I try to go inside with him. Felt good, shoulder coming forward. He's still pulling out. I don't feel as if my inside is good enough to stop his outside drives, and I decide to switch to really truly establish the high spot to get this uh, match out of showboat zone and back into winning land. Um, I'm fighting with pronation. You watch, he's continuing to drive, shoulder moving away from the body. He's never crossing the center line fully into a push. You can think that he's an inside arm wrestler, however, every single drive that he does against me, his shoulder is moving further away from his body. Not once does he stand up and switch to a push, which is vital, a vital thought to crossing the center line of arm wrestling, okay? Um, so I agree that if he was able to do that, your argument would hold a lot more weight to me. Um, but for whatever reason, and I believe it's due to the strap drag's efficiency as a style, and just me being more massive, he's never able to quite do it. And you see now, I've actually stood up, and after being an inside open, switched to outside, now I'm back to moving my shoulder back into the match, uh, with forward credibility is what inevitably ends this match. Um, one kind of failed attempt here, I believe. Not quite enough jam, back to the outside. And I think that the next time I move my shoulder forward, it's, it's finished. And this is what staying intimate and controlling the center, there you go. That's him trying to switch over, ends up in a re-grip which is uh, what controlling the center line is all about. When you try and cross the center line and you don't have it, this is where the biggest problems happen. Jody now giving me my marching orders. And at this point he's fatigued enough that I'm able to hit outside and then quickly switch to shoulders. Hey, your boy quit! Your boy quit round one, Bob! He quit round one! Anyways, fun to talk about. Uh, guys, check out Blue's channel. He's always doing crazy stuff. He's traveling all around the world, kicking butt. He's on the way to uh, pull uh, tugboat Captain Chance Shaw down in Florida. Should be great. Good luck. Uh, hopefully see you at WL601.